Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this Invest 94L discussion for August 2nd, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, it would be really awesome if you guys did hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for 900 subscribers. We are almost there. We're less than 100 away from the big ultimate goal of 1,000 subscribers. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, as well as ring the bell notification so you don't miss my next upload. Also, watching the whole video because getting to the goal of 1,000 subscribers and monetization, we're getting very close. And you guys watching the whole video will help the weather dude channel out a lot so please consider watching the whole video as well please do and also like and share this video with your friends thank you now let's go on with today's video so today we're going to be talking about invest 94l now after this video please consider watching my Tropical Storm Isaiah's coverage, I did another update on it, so please consider watching that after today's video as my other upload for today. Now, Invest 94L, now, while it may not look good on radar or satellite imagery, it is a storm system to watch, all right, and I will be explaining why during this video. So, now, Hurricane started giving it a 60% chance of development here, and actually, let me see, they might even have the 2 o'clock update in. Yes, they do, and it's still 60% chance of development here, all right? So, as of the 2 o'clock update here, it looks like 60% chance of development. Uh, the difference is now is that it looks like the formation chance within two days has gone up to 40. As I think it was about 10 or 20 before. Um, so showers and storms associated with a tropical wave have become, it's slowly becoming better organized. This isn't a, like Isaiah, this isn't a rapidly developing storm system. Um, environmental conditions will be conducive for additional development over the few next few days. And we could have a tropical depression or storm by the middle of the week. All right. And so keep, keep moving through the Western Atlantic and maybe even towards the East Coast. That's something you have to watch too. But normally, when storms track this far north in latitude, usually they'll be carried out to sea because uh, we might have a front be, uh, passing through and also the way right, the high is steering it. Um, but for a storm like Isaiah's, it's already on the east coast, so we know where it's going. But this storm system could even go maybe a little bit farther than North Carolina. We'll see. Every storm is every storm system is different here. Um, let's take a look at our ship's diagnostics message with this. As you can see, um, now over the next 24 hours through through tomorrow morning, looks like we're having some. Very low amounts of wind shear, even beyond that. Wind shear never gets above about never gets above 16 or 17 miles an hour. It stays at 14 knots as the max, and even after that, it drops. Um, looking at the sea surface temperatures, those also do continue to go up from 28 through about 29 and a half, which is pretty much exactly what Isaiah is dealing with, um, which is obviously good because that means water temperatures are in the mid, maybe even close to the upper 80s. Um, storm is moving pretty fast, though. It's moving about 18 or so miles an hour. That could slow down, though, drastically, maybe, to only about a few miles an hour. Uh, heat content is also pretty high right now. Maybe over the next 48 hours, it could be as well. Uh, after about 72 hours, though, the heat content is going to drop off a little bit, and they might that might not be so good for development. But we will have some warm ocean water, and that is definitely a good sign for this. So uh, looking at our current storm information, you can see 30 mile an hour winds with this system, 1,013 millibars of pressure. Range of circulation is about 150 or so miles and maybe about 110 or so miles of maximum wind. So this the wind does go out pretty far from the storm center. Um, and we take a look at the satellite imagery. It's definitely got that, that counterclockwise rotation. It's just not centered yet. Like I said, this isn't even a tropical depression yet. All right. So for an invest, I think this definitely looks pretty good on satellite imagery personally. Um, there is a little, the little area of circulation right in there at the, at the final frame. Um, I think there was an area of circulation. We've got that convection to the northeast of the storm system, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but like I said, this is nothing more than an invest or tropical wave right now, but something to watch. And we do have a definitely have a flare-up of thunderstorms, as you can see by the visible satellite indicates that better. Um, these lighter gray colors are more some wispy clouds, and then your convection is all the way over here. I can do a smiley face. All right, anyway, but uh, there has definitely been a blow-up of convection here. Um, and maybe a little area of rotation that was starting to show up just north of 18 uh, north latitude. So uh, that'll be, if we have a surface flow starting to develop, that would be crucial for the storm system developing. Um, let's take a look at the ocean water right now. According to the National Hurricane Center, uh, as of the latest update, this looks like it's located about maybe 50, about 58 degrees west or so, maybe about close to 20 degrees north. So when we look at that on our ocean water, our sea surface temperature anomalies, um, the storm system is standing right about here. 
somewhere in this vicinity, maybe a little bit further south than that, maybe right, right here. All right, so it is sitting in ocean water temperatures that are slightly above average, maybe moving into some more average waters. And once it gets close to Bermuda, like it's forecast to move, um, we can see some more significant sea surface temperature anomalies, maybe close to about one and a half degrees. All right, so that would obviously mean better development for this. But we also have to wash the dry air, and we have to wash the wind shear. So I'll be showing that to you guys as well. So ocean water that is sitting in right now, about 28 or 29, which is definitely good for development. But as it moves northwest, it can, it can run to more 29 and a half, close to 30, right? Because uh, some of these more dark red magenta colors do mean 30. All right, so we're getting a little closer to, uh, to 30 degree waters. And even 30 Celsius is, is still well into the upper 80s, and that's very good for development. Even, even without that, though, 28 or 29 uh, Celsius is just fine for development here. Um, so here's the exact low center, and here's the low pressure system right here, about 59 degrees west and about 18 and a half degrees north. Those are your exact coordinates. All right. um, so looking at the model track guidance, as you can see, this has recently become an invest, so not too many models have picked up on this yet, so it would be good to definitely look at this uh, in a day or two to see how it's really come together. Uh, but models all agree that this will be trekking northwestward and making a northward turn potentially. That can, that can mean it's going out to sea. Maybe it'll impact little Bermuda right here. Say hi, Bermuda. Yeah, Bermuda's right there, so this thing might be skirting by Bermuda. We'll have to watch because um, they could be hit by some stronger waves, especially if the storm starts to get its act together, uh, which it could possibly. Now, the GEFS model tracks, they're not really you know too confident in this. They actually think the storm system could weaken a little bit as it moves to the north and west, but you can see the general track. I would like the models usually when it when an invest usually develops this early, the models are never too confident. They think this one's gonna be pretty weak. Um, but what I want you to focus on more right now is the track. But even the track I wouldn't be so confident about yet. But definitely want to focus on the track more than the strength because the strength will always change because this this does have a pretty good radius of maximum wind, but this isn't the biggest system in the world. It's not that large. So smaller smaller scale systems can develop quickly they can also weaken very quickly so stuff can drastically change here even the track can drastically change but the models do bring it somewhat closer to Bermuda and then have it spinning out and kind of kind of dying from there but looking at the model intensity guidance you can see that it could a good number of models do bring it to a tropical storm maybe even a category one hurricane all right so that's something to watch too but also the same those three models do that but these three models also keep it at a you know tropical depression or just like a tropical wave so it's kind of a 50 50 split right now um, but looking at some more model tracking guidance, um, here's where the low is right now. Or, excuse me, the low is right about here. Uh, some models do bring a little bit further south. This is from Track to Tropics. This is kind of like from like some more early cycle guidance. Current intensity, again, 30 miles an hour. Um, but a lot of models do bring in that north and maybe bending a little bit more towards the north, northeast. Um, possibly just, it could even do like a, some of these systems do like a full, almost like a full half circle around Bermuda. So that could be the case too because that's what's known as a Bermuda high. So when you got a high pressure sitting here, all right, that would steer the system because the, the flow is like this, because it's clockwise with a high, counterclockwise with a low pressure. So that would kind of steer the system up and around that high pressure system. So that's why it's called a Bermuda high, because it's sitting right near Bermuda. So that's in that in that sort of way, Bermuda can get protected sometimes, but sometimes the Bermuda high doesn't always sit right over Bermuda, protecting it completely. All right, so in, uh, in some cases, the Bermuda high can be over a little bit farther to the east, meaning it could bring the storm system north right over Bermuda. That could happen as well. So uh, let's take a look right, at some of the models. And you might not be able to find this on the GFS model. You might not be able to find where the storm is right, just by taking a look at this. You're like, uh, is that it over there? No, that is Isaiah's. Um, 94L is actually right here. Right? And you might not be able to see it too well. Like I said, the models aren't going to be too confident in this yet. All right? um, they have it developing a little bit. Um, Monday afternoon, we see a little bit area of heavier rain. There's kind of like almost like a little surface load trying to develop, but uh, it's not quite getting there yet. Um, but this storm, like I said, it's it's a very you know small scale system, and the pressure is not going to be too low either. So the winds may not be that strong, all right? But notice how the low kind of stalls right over that area. And if it stalls in a region that is con conducive for tropical development, that could let it strengthen for a little bit before it probably dies out. But this is getting like well far out in the time at this point. So looking at those surface winds, all right, again, you might not be able to see it too well, but there is a little, there is a, a surface low, all right, right here, that's, they, they try to develop it a little bit, um, but then eventually, like I said, this does kind of, you know, kind of just sit there and sort of spin up, but if this were to stall a little closer to Bermuda, Bermuda might have 
um, long-lasting uh, rainfall, maybe some long-lasting flooding. Now, when I show you the cyclonic vortex signature, you're definitely going to be able to see it a lot better. I might be able to pinpoint where the storm is. Um, and there it is. It's getting some decent amounts. We got some reds trying to develop here, 25, 35. Um, so we are, it, again, look how small the system is. This, this will be able to see it a lot better. Uh, like I said, though, look how small the storm system is. It's not that big. So you might not be able to find it really when you look at the models at first, but search and you'll find it. Look at the National Hurricane Center coordinates and you'll be able to find it easier. Like I said, though, this just developed. So all the models, I mean, that's the way Isaiah's was too. Models weren't too confident in this either. But once you got a few hours out there, but they think it's going to be a Cat 2, Cat 3, and while that really didn't happen, it still became a Category 1. So just give the models like a day or two, and you'll be able to see, get, be able to get a better idea on the strength uh, and, and the intensity as well as the track. So that was the GFS model I just showed you. We're going to be flipping over to the GEM model here. And the GEM model, it's going to be even harder to find it if you're looking at the 12Z model run. All right, and I'll be able to pinpoint it for you guys. It is right around here. It's just a mess of showers and storms. The gem model has even less confidence in it than the GFS does. I mean, you really cannot tell there's anything there. I mean, it looks sort of like this here. Like, it's nothing more than a bundle, jumble of, you know, showers and storms. The only reason we point this out is because it's, it was, you know, National Hurricane Center is having, you know, it's, it's thinking about it. All right, the National Hurricane Center is keeping watch over it. So that's why we should keep over a watch over it as well, especially since the development chances are up to 60%. All right, so looking at the surface winds, um, doesn't look too impressive. Matter of fact, there's really nothing there almost. Um, but the cyclonic vorticity signature, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Um, so let's get a little look at that, and there it is. It's right there. So it doesn't look too intense. The, the cyclonic vorticity is more so a little bit farther down on the chart. But maybe you could combine with a little bit of energy, some non-tropical energy, and maybe you could get a little act together. Potentially over the next five days, if we can combine with some other energy looming around the atmosphere, but what's this? Ooh, that's interesting. All right, that'll be for another video. All right, that'll be probably be released in about a few days if we if the if the gem model does continue to point that out, and other models will be able to do a video on that. That looks pretty interesting too. Maybe invest ninety five L. So looking at some of like the service conditions, I really don't show this too much. This is from I believe from the Ocean Hurricane Center. Here is your high pressure system right here. Uh, here's your tropical wave indicated by the orange here. Um. And you can see how the, the, the H kind of has this brown line around it. That is going to help to guide the storm system up this way. But there's, then there's also a little backdoor cold front that can maybe pull it out to sea. So there's, there's going to be a lot of steering mechanisms that could be tugging at this thing. All right, that is not 94L up there. This is 94L right here. Um, about a 20 to 30% chance of development within the next five days. This is according to NCP and the GEM model. Um, when we look at the NCP ensembles, um, Again, 20 to 30 percent chance of development here. So that is it for today's video, guys. Definitely, this is a storm to keep watch over. So um, don't let your guard down with this thing yet. Thank you guys for watching. I'm the Weather Dude. Signing off. Till next time. Catch you guys next video.